Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Soap Thing Thoughts, episode five. Joining me today is the dude with the bougie mister and the people's blade. It's J Mac, the Red Island Shaver. Welcome back to the Soap Thing Project. Thank you for having me. Well, this is awkward. So about a week ago, you and I sat down to do a podcast episode about skin sensitivities and some stuff went down during post-production, and I lost the video footage, but I still have the audio footage. We'll talk about exactly what happened uh, here in a couple minutes. But as long as I got you back here uh, in the original video, we didn't touch on the Never Alone campaign. So I'm wondering if you can speak to that for a couple minutes. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so... I guess it was a couple of years ago now. I uh, I did a video uh, on my YouTube channel, um, you know, just talking about the community and you know how it helps me out with my own mental health. And uh, and Jason from the Razor Company reached out to me and uh, he said that you know the video resonated with him quite a bit, and he thought that it was something maybe we should uh, talk about doing something for the community as a whole. So so it got us to talking, and then. Uh, one thing led to another, and before you know it, we had this uh, this project, this movement, right? The Never Alone Project, which uh, the proceeds uh, from the soap sales go to charity uh, around mental health. And then, uh, but then, like, the bigger picture uh, over and above that is just, you know, getting it out there and, um, you know, supporting people within the community with mental health struggles. And, and it's almost like a beacon. I, I, I like to call it a beacon, right? Like if you see somebody that's posting a shave of the day using never alone, then, you know, that's a person, you know, it's behind the project. And that's somebody that if you're struggling that, that you can reach out and talk to because they, they believe in it too. Right. No, that, that makes perfect sense. I, I get that. I, there, there seems to, even in 2022 still be this stigma that, you know, uh, oh, you're a man. What do you need, uh, you know, mental health help for? Like, like even when I was growing up, you know, my like when I was really young, my dad used to be like, "Don't you cry, boy. I'll give you something to cry about." And it's just like, so so as we get older, I think there's, uh, you know, we forget that we're we're still people. You know that we that we have problems. I, I'm not trying to. Uh, to diminish anybody else's mental health issues. But, you know, I've the Air Force has put me in places under circumstances where I have seen things with my own two eyes that nobody should ever see. God awful, terrible, horrifying things that that would screw a lot of people up. So, you know, I had to had to seek help for those things. So there's a we need to spread the word that there's no, there's no shame in that, you know, for, for goodness sake, if you are having issues, you need to, uh, to take steps necessary for your own sake to, to help those issues because you got to live with yourself. You know, you're the one that's got to wake up day in and day out and face your problems. Nobody else is going to do that, but you. So that's a, that's a noble cause to, uh, to draw attention to, I think. Well, what do you think? I agree 110 percent. Yeah. And, and that's the other big, big aspect of it. Exactly. Uh, you, you nailed it on the head there is, you know, eliminating that stigma around mental health. And, you know, uh, we're in a male dominated hobby, to be fair, and uh, just want to get those conversations started where people, you know, don't feel that they have to uh, suffer in silence, suffer alone. You know, they can they can be human. You know, they can show emotion. They can reach out and talk to people and and. Uh, you know, they'll get the help they need. What you know, what may, maybe for some people, going to therapy isn't isn't their bag, right? It's not it's not what they want to do. But you know, you can reach out to somebody within the wet shaving community and have a conversation with them and, and leave that conversation feeling better uh, about yourself and your situation. And um, and that's that's really what we're after is just to, to keep that conversation going and keep it 
you know, in, in the forefront with the, uh, you know, and just, just keep driving that home. And it's, it's a project we're going to keep doing it. So I don't, I don't see any end in sight. And as long as I'm within the hobby and the other people involved, like Jason and Peter and, and Ray, that does our labels, as long as everybody's involved, that's, we're just going to keep doing it and keep growing it every year. Right. The biggest thing is just do something. Like, like if you're having problems and you, you can't get past the stereotype of, you know, hanging out in the chase lounge, talking about your feelings with a psychiatrist, you know, there are, there are other ways to address these problems. You know, we're not telling you, you got to go do that, but we are saying that if you're, that if you're struggling, do something, you know, get creative about it, get creative about it if you have to, and just address the issues in any way you feel comfortable that's going to benefit you. So you, you don't always have to, uh, you know, th there's, there's more than one way to, to address these issues. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, this is kind of a rough segue, but we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the, problems I had during editing. So I use a uh, a program called Adobe Premiere Elements. And what I do is when I do a shave video using the Sony ZV-1, I will put the video footage into the Adobe Premiere Elements. And then that's where I add the uh, the subscribe button, the sound effects, the background music, you know, all the ancillary peripheral stuff. And then that's where I edit out, you know, certain things that I don't want. And then I put the the top down shot of the lathering process in there and a couple of other things. And then I basically have to um, take about half an hour to render the video, which compresses all those components into one MP4. And then usually what I do is... I will watch the video a couple times before I upload it to YouTube just to make give one final check to make sure everything's good to go. But one of the funny things I'm noticing with uh, Zoom MP4s is that once I plug that into Adobe Premiere Elements, it gets really buggy and glitchy for reasons that I still don't understand. Like it doesn't destroy the video. You know, we still got good audio and video quality but it makes it harder and more time consuming to edit the videos. But nonetheless, I got it done. I got the whole thing edited and uh, got it ready to upload to YouTube. And I was uploading it to YouTube and I was like, you know what? I'm just not even going to watch it. Like I think it's, it's good to go. When have I ever had any problems, you know, with, with post-production, uh, with the post-production video? So what I do after, you know, when it's getting uploaded to YouTube, because this stuff takes up a lot of space, is I just promptly delete it from my computer. All the raw footage just gets deleted. Well, when I got uploaded to YouTube, I was like, you know what? This is waiting in line to, to go live. I better, you know, just check it and make sure everything's good to go. And I got on there and sure enough, the video came up and there was no actual video. It was just an error message. So my my dumbass deleted the footage and couldn't go back and fix it. So here we are. And I just wanted to bring you back back in for a couple minutes to kind of set the tone for the video and let everybody uh, see us both at the same time. And then we're going to roll into the audio only part of the of the original video because I think it was too good to just redo it. You know, it's kind of one of those things where everything went so well that there's there's no way to uh, to just do it all over again and have it be just as good. So we hope you enjoy today's video, and we want to thank you for watching. I'm sure everybody's curious. How did you end up doing this weird thing where you shave in front of a camera? We're all curious to hear about that. Uh, well, it's, it's funny, actually. It was... Um it was kind of the limitations of one platform. So I, I was, I was and still am really active in a Canadian wet shavers, Facebook group called uh, Canadian wet shavers, ironically. Um, and uh, a couple guys were doing videos and 
I thought, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do a couple of videos in the group uh, just for fun. And I did a couple and, and everything was, was great and people seemed to like it. And then I went to, uh, went to throw a video in there one day and Facebook wouldn't allow me to upload the video to the group. No matter what I did, I, I, I couldn't get it uploaded. And then and I was like, well, uh, maybe I'll try doing it on YouTube and I'll try sharing the YouTube link to the group and uh, maybe that'll work. And it worked and I've been doing it ever since. Yeah, how long has that been? It's been a few years, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been about four and a half, five years, I think, coming up in August. This next August coming, I think. Five years you've been doing YouTube videos. That's that's quite a stretch. It's well, it's been a grind. It's been a grind. Well, thanks for thanks for continuing to come back to it. I know a lot of people that have come and gone in that kind of time frame. So the fact that we still got you around, we still got some of the other uh OGs around have been doing this for a long time. That's uh, that's good to see. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I enjoy doing it, and you know, part of it's for me. I, I enjoy putting the content out there, and I like to think my channel has uh, you know a little something for everybody. I try and try and be versed on you know all the different types of shaving, so safety razors, single edge uh, injector, straights, shavettes. So I kind of try and put something up there for everybody, and. Um, and I'm really active watching other people's content as well, including yours. So, you know, that, that's also what keeps me invested in it too, right? Like I'll watch one of your videos and, and see some, some things you, you talk about and, and some of the gear you're using. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I gotta, gotta grab me some of that and I'll go and grab it. And then, then I'll want to do a video with myself. So it's, it's kind of self-sustaining, right? Yeah. As much as we would all like to think we're not enablers, that's, that's kind of exactly what we are. So, um, so the topic that you picked for today's discussion is skin sensitivities. Now, I am somebody who who has um, particularly resilient skin. I can pretty much use whatever I want, and things are going to go according to plan. I understand uh, you your experiences are are not quite so similar. Exactly. Yeah, I'm kind of the complete polar opposite. So that's that's why I thought it would be a really really good uh, topic for us to talk about because we can both kind of come at it from from each end of the spectrum, right? There's a difference between um, having actual skin sensitivities, like where your skin is going to adversely react to ingredients, you know, like alcohol, menthol, cinnamon, clove, things like that, where you're gonna your skin might break out, turn red, you'll get a burning sensation, even a rash, possibly. There's a difference between that and having facial hair that grows in problematic ways. And I think a lot of people say, oh, I have sensitive skin. But in reality, what the problem is, they have, they, they maybe have very thick, coarse facial hair, maybe they have extremely curly hair that uh, makes them more prone to, uh, to getting ingrown, ingrown hairs, razor bumps, things like that. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a skin sensitivities. That's, that's, that's a growth problem that, uh, that I think people are experiencing. So we want to make sure we, we differentiate. So, so what are your personal experience with, uh, with skin sensitivities? I would say you, you pretty much summed it up right there. That, that's actually kind of mean in a nutshell. So as, as far as reactions to frags, uh, different ingredients and soaps some of them may light me up a little bit but never to the point that i, I ever have to rinse them off you know you some hear some people say you know i put a put an aftershave splash on or used a particular soap and it was so bad i had to, to rinse it all off for me that's not the case if, if i do get a little bit of a reaction it usually clears up in a couple of minutes so generally i can use anything that i own without problems the, the biggest thing for me is is the growth pattern my my growth pattern is really well, it's it's stupid to be honest. Um, I I see so many videos, uh, and especially when I was getting into straight razor shaving, where you know it's like, oh yeah, you just you know you do your first pass or you know first pass or first two passes, you know straight down north to south, and then you do <laughs> your you do your, your last pass south to north, and oh everything's just baby butt smooth, and you're you're ready to get on with your day. And then I, I was trying that and I was like, this just isn't working. Cause I have so much hair left over. And, um, 
So yeah, that's my biggest problem really. It's just a crazy growth pattern and, and hair that frankly just doesn't like to be shaved. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, a lot of people have these wacky growth patterns where your hair just grows six ways from Sunday and it's, it's tough to, uh, to get a handle on it. So, so me personally, uh, whenever I'm shaving, I shave uh, on the first pass down on my face, up on my neck, and then across the grain on my face on the second pass, and then down. So, so down and then up on the first pass, and then across and then down on the second pass. And the reason I do that is because that is the kind of method where I am hitting the least amount of against the grain that I possibly can. If I were to shave straight up, like against the grain uh, on my cheeks, I will actually break out really bad in, in, in ingrown hairs. And my the hair on my neck is really weird. Like it will grow basically from all directions towards the center and then down right here. So, I mean, yeah, I could kind of shave in a circle or I could just go straight up, which has the least amount of against the grain uh, shaving on the first pass and then go down, which kind of takes care of everything else. But yeah, I think a lot of people have a more complex grain pattern than they care to admit. Very few people, the hair, their facial hair just grows straight up and down in one direction. It's usually kind of this kind of a mess, to be honest with you, where it'll grow this way and that way. Like, like for example, I have here right here that grows this way that is, I have to do a lot of blade buffing to have any hope of getting it to, uh, down to where it's a, you know, a DFS, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And it's, it's funny you mentioned that. So, uh, if you look at traditional barbering, cause that's one, another thing I like to watch on YouTube, like, you know, a, a hot towel shaves and stuff like that. So with traditional barbering, they do what's called the 14 stroke shave. And so 14 stroke shave is there's the 14 shaving strokes people learn as a barber. So like the first, the first set of passes is down, kind of goes in an angle across the cheek. They hit part of the mustache and go towards the ear right underneath the jawline. They go down and then they always teach, but on every man, you know, the first part of their neck, it grows down and the bottom part, it grows up. And, and, and that's like the gospel. But then you go into the Facebook groups and, and, and every once in a while you see a Facebook post come up, you know, you know, from people that especially just really getting into the hobby and they're all excited, right? So they want to want to go out and experience that hot towel shave. And like I went out for a hot towel shave and it was absolutely horrible. Like I was, uh, my face was red. I had wicked razor burn. I don't know what this barber did to me. Well, that's, that's what happened. Tying back into your point where most people have a more complicated growth pattern than they care to admit is employing that you go for a, a hot towel shave when they employ that technique they're probably shaving half of the shave they're, they're going against the grain on on the client the whole shave so for me like that wouldn't even work like my first pass uh, i go straight down face and neck second pass uh, on the cheek i go from ear to mouth then i do an upwards pass on the neck which is across the grain again so now i've done across the grain in two different directions then my third pass i kind of go up and then i j-hook towards the center of my neck because my my hair on my right side grows up and kind of towards my chin carries on right under the left jaw line but then on the lower part of my my left side of the face it actually goes from my ear uh, towards the center of my neck so it, it it's growing like in three different directions on my neck alone so I've had to, I mean, it's, I've been wet shaving almost nine years. It's been nine years of experimenting um, the, the best ways to kind of tackle it without going full against the grain and, and, and trying to, but still trying to pick it up on each pass. Yeah, th this hobby is one of those things where unless you're going to take a very specific soap and brush and razor and blade and just stay there, you're going to be experimenting until the cows come home to graze. That's just how it is. So you want to know uh, what a really unpleasant shave feels like when I was, uh, when I was in boot camp, air force, uh, basic military training in uh, 2011, I spent eight weeks dry shaving with a Gillette Mach three 
just to save time. Boy, was I stupid. S-T-O-O-P-I-D, stupid. Because I walked away from the bathroom every morning with people like, what did you just do? So, so yeah, I mean, there's there's certain ways that you that you have to shave to make sure that you get a, a pleasant shave. You got to use, a, you know, a good quality soap. You got to make sure you're using enough water. You got to make sure you're using, you know, the right, you know, soap and the the razor and the blade and even even the right brush. Like I tend to use these uh, these QED Select brushes right here. And the reason I use so them so often is because they're particularly uh, thin, like they have a really low density knot, and because they're they're kind of scritchy, and so this helps really exfoliate my skin and kind of break loose any hairs that might be getting you know funny ideas to to grow places that they're not they're not supposed to, giving me ingrown hairs. So. Um, have you ever experienced having uh, uh, reactions to fragrance oils? Uh, just, just minute. Um, I have a couple splashes that will they'll light me up a little bit. Uh, one of them, SMG Guns and Roses. It uh, it lights me up like crazy when I first put it on, um, and not just from the alcohol in it. The fragrance oils itself just just burn me, but. Maybe I'm a bit of a masochist that way because once in a blue moon, I don't mind it. And and it clears up so quick that I don't really think about it. Like like my face and neck will be hot for like a good 10 minutes and then and then it'll just go away. And then, you know, I'll check myself out in the mirror. And there's no red spots. There's like there's no visible irritation and everything feels fine. I'm like, oh, OK, cool. Um, so I'm lucky that way because some people can be very, very sensitive to uh, to oils and stuff like that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it's one of those things where uh, I've always told people to approach with caution when they're using certain products, like because old fashioned bay rum, you know, that has cinnamon and clove, both of which uh, can aggravate people with skin sensitivities to the point where some artisans like Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements don't even use cinnamon and clove anymore. So it's one of those things where you kind of got to discover what you are capable of dealing with. And then I've had certain products like, you know, I'm going to name drop Murphy and McNeil because they're my all time favorite artisan. So I can complain about them if I want to. Uh, I've had a couple soaps from them that I put them on my face and it was just like, Whoa, like I'm getting, you know, burning. I, I had that problem with Ouroboros, which I still have. And I had that problem with Mob Churd, which I used all the time before I came out here. So it's one of those things where it's just like, if, if it, otherwise feels good on the face and it smells good, then I'm happy to deal with, uh, you know, 10 minutes of a little bit of burning. But, you know, for some people, you know, they're, they actually have, uh, you know, skin that would adversely react to those kind of uh, fragrance oils or ingredients and their face might burn, you know, half the day. You know, obviously that's that's untenable. So people, some people just can't do that. And some people, I've actually heard of different people saying they can't use animal-based products like tallow, manteca, duck fat, or things like that because that uh, adversely affects their their skin. Which is interesting. It's sad to hear because those are great products, but sometimes you, you just people's uh people's skin can't tolerate that sort of stuff so people people need to make sure they're looking at the ingredients list on their on their wet shaving products because otherwise you might get something in your shaved end that your skin isn't prepared to tolerate well now you're sitting on this this product you know that you're either going to have to throw away or give away or sell or something like that so just my thought what, what, what do you think about that yeah no i agree uh Atlant i also add to that lanolin is another um Another, uh, that's a big one actually, uh, for allergen. Uh, like, so here a lot of people say Mitchell's wolf fat, like they, they like it, but they just can't use it because it lights them up. Um, so that's that's a big one too. Um, A and E, if we're, if we're going to name drop, A and E is a little bit, I don't want to say notorious, but they've had a few products that, that have given skin reactions to people. Um, 
luckily for me, nothing for A and E, which is one of my favorite artisans, has has lit me up. But even if it did, then you know I would just steer clear of those soaps from them that that light me up. Uh, you know, and because you get a lot of people that they want to. They almost want to, you know, tell artisans like, well, maybe the sense shouldn't be as strong and this and that other thing. It's like, well, at the end of the day, people kind of need to learn what what bothers their face because what may bother your face isn't going to bother mine. And I think people just need to learn, uh, you know, just just what what gets their skin irritated or, or burning and just stay away from those scent profiles because you know you don't want to do a disservice to the artisans by making them reformulate all their products, and even if they did, you still may get burned by something anyway, even if it's in a lesser concentration. So now, now the soap scent doesn't smell as strong, it may not smell as good, and it's still going to burn you anyway. And luckily, you know, with this this hobby and this rabbit hole that we have with artisans, you know, you look at like like I said Murphy McNeil or Sterling or A and E or Phoenix. You know, if they have a couple cents that burn you, well, that sucks. But they have about a hundred others that you could probably choose from that you're still gonna get. You know that that experience with that artisan, and and, and your face isn't gonna react to it. So, no, you're right. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the the sad reality is uh, everything can't be made safe for everybody. You know, I, this might turn out to be an unpopular opinion, but it's the truth. You know, but but the the other side of that coin is because the this hobby is so big. You know, how many different versions of Creed Aventus type sense do we have? You know, if so, the one from from this brand isn't working. Well, you can always go to another brand and and pick up something that works for you. You know, if uh, artisans like A and E or P A A or some of the other artisans that put out scents that are really really banging and really kind of uh, radiating into the room, you know, that's, that's their prerogative. You know, if, if that's the, the kind of consumer that they're catering to, then that's just what they're going to do. So there's so many brands that you could find a good sandalwood scent, a good lime scent, a good Creed Aventus dupe. You know, it's getting to where there's a lot of like Tom Ford dupes. Like if you like tobacco vanilla, there's, probably a dozen artisans that are making tobacco vanille dupes. So the, the idea that you're not being properly served, you know, because an artisan is making, you know, soap in a, in a scent with, in, with ingredients or scent oils that don't agree with your face. Well, somebody out there is making something that that's going to work for you. Mark my words. I agree a hundred percent. And and that's one of the things I love about wet shaving is it brings a lot of these fragrances to uh, to soaps and splashes so you can enjoy them without spending a fortune on frags because I'm notoriously cheap. I like smelling good. I like, you know, I like fragrances. I just don't want to have a collection of, you know, bottles that cost two, three, four, five hundred dollars. Like Aventus, you mentioned Aventus. I love Aventus. My wife loves Aventus. So naturally, I like to wear Aventus from time to time. I can't afford a bottle of Creed Aventus. That stuff's expensive, but I have a couple of Aventus dupes and they're pretty bold and banging, which is, which is good. And that's one thing I like out of my aftershave splashes. I like those strong splashes that just like waft off you like for the day, which, which to me is an incredible value, right? So a $500 bottle of frag or, 20 to 26 dollar aftershave splash that smells but 99.9 percent the same and has pretty much the same longevity which which is great it's like uh, the uh, i'll plug la mafioso from henders classics and company so he scented that splash at eight percent edp level i think it was edp or edt um it's strong it's 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 really strong so splash i think canadians like 24 bucks 25 bucks the bottle of frag is is 100 plus so there you go right so some right. value for your money no it, you you're, you're not wrong i mean this is where you and i will probably differ slightly uh when it comes to men's fragrances i'm actually somebody that will tend to leave that to the professionals 
like uh, like Dior, Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent, Dolce and Gabbana, things like that. And the reason is because I've actually I actually had like five uh, artisan fragrances in a row that just wouldn't perform. They would last two hours on my skin. It wouldn't project very far. And so I finally decided eh, I better I better stay away from this. So I had some bad luck with that. But uh, you can actually get Creed Aventus if you shop at like um, Fragrance X, Fragrance Net. Sometimes they'll get uh, gray market batches of them in that are 50, 60 percent off. Now, that's still expensive, but mm-hmm. uh, but for a niche fragrance, it's actually not bad. Uh, since you mentioned Creed Aventus, I'm not going to do the frag out yet, but I'm going to show you uh, Sadrat Boise by Mansara. You can actually get bottles of this. It's a four ounce bottle for like $95. And that stuff will last you for a long time because it's insanely strong. Mansara fragrances are just crazy strong. And that is kind of a a fruity, woody, leathery sort of thing that's kind of vaguely in the in the wheelhouse of of Creed Aventus. So if you're if you're trying not to be in the artisan space when it comes to uh to men's fragrances, there are definitely great deals to be had. You just gotta know where to look. I think uh a lot of people are scared to look for these uh for these really competitively priced uh uh, designer or niche fragrances because I think they're afraid they're going to get ripped off. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I've been, I've been on slightly the other end of the spectrum. I, I've been lucky with the the hand. Well, I shouldn't say handful. I have quite a few now. It, I guess it depends the artisan that's doing the dupe. Um, some like Hendrix Classics and Company. He's. Uh, I'll I'll plug Pete because just I like the way Pete thinks because his. His uh his idea when it comes to doing dupes and fragrances is more is more. <laughs> so you, you know, like when you when you buy a Hendrix splash, it's uh it's strong. Like it's it's really strong. The first time I wore La Mafioso and then Magique, the the soap that he did for uh, Kim Gray, which is Dior Sauvage. The first time I wore each of those, I put them on pretty thick. My wife was sitting in the living room across the living room from me, and she's like, What are you wearing? I'm like uh, wearing the, the the mafia soap and, and splash. Why? She's like, because I'm getting a headache from across the room. And I will admit, I I I it up pretty strong. And even I was just sitting here like it's like, whew, whew, <laughs> I got a bit of a headache myself because it was it was it was bold and banging. There there was no question about it. But uh, but I do also agree with you on the fact that some artisans do drop the ball a little bit with some of their dupes and and frankly yeah, they're just not scented strong enough uh, with the splash right i i will uh throw you a ball when it comes to uh pete hendrix because hc and c like i've got uh alpine forest and holy crap is that like a freaking uh, what is the scent that that is it's uh, it's fur balsam it's like a fur balsam baseball bat to the face like even open up the smell, the the soap and, and smell it. Like you open up the tub and stick your nose and you're like, whoa, that is some strong stuff. So he he definitely he doesn't play around when it comes to uh to concentration and sin strength. And again, that's one of those things where generally if something's got an extremely strong sin strength just coming off of the tub, that might be something if you got a sensitive skin to uh to approach with caution because it could, I mean, it might not be a, a scent oil that you would normally react to, but the fact that there's so darn much of it, you know, you, you, it's one of those things where if you know you have skin sensitivities and you might want to be careful with, uh, with stuff like that. Let's plug the uh, Canadian mafia show real quick. Cause I'm actually not super familiar with it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the Canadian mafia show, we're, uh, we're a group of five hosers. <laughs> there's myself. Uh, there's uh, one pass, B. Lou, also known sh- for short as B. Lou, uh, Mike Hareb, Phil Tremblay, and Lyle the Sask Shaver. So very, very quick origin story in us. How we came to be was we all kind of met in various Facebook groups. I've been friends with Lyle forever. Um, and then uh, we met B. Lou, Canadian Wet Shavers. I think it was there. 
We met Mike over in another Facebook group. We met uh, Phil and Canadian Wet Shavers. So anyway, long story, this is the super condensed version. We were uh, watching BBS.live, as a lot of people watch Nate and Mel over at BBS.live, kind of the IGOGs when it comes to um, wet shaving shows. And the Canadian members of the audience went on a tear for a couple weeks or, or, like, or about a month worth of shows winning giveaways like every other giveaway was going to canada and then mel was doing his frag giveaways uh, at the time and he still does the odd one but he was doing like a frag every show and then a canadian would win it like i think it was seven seven bbs.lives in a row when they do two a month so that was like three and a half months worth of bbs.lives a canadian won it and of course mel would have to order it in canada and he'd be giving away like a 50 ml bottle on the show, but he could never get the 50 ml bottle in Canada. It'd be like a 200 ml. It's like my frag for today is CK shock that I won from Melly Mel on BBS.live. And he get, he would get so sour. So he started calling us the Canadian mafia uh, from winning all this stuff. And it wasn't just us that are in the mafia. It was all the Canadians watching. And there's a lot, like there's a lot of Canadian white shavers that watch all the shows. And uh, so it was kind of boring. It, it stuck. So every time we joined a live, whether there or Facebook, you know, people would start seeing names pop up and like, Oh, look, it's the Canadian mafia. They're here. So we got talking one day amongst the five of us. We're like, you know, we should, we should kind of play off this a bit, maybe create an Instagram show. So that's what we did. We created our, our own show and you know, we like to have fun. We're, we're we are serious and we do have serious topics and, uh, but we like to put a bit of a fun spin on it. And then we have our hosers corner where we kind of, you know, talk about drama that's going on in the community. And that's a, that's a spin off of coaches corner, which is on hockey night in Canada, which is a Canadian tradition. Every Saturday night, there's a hockey game on the CBC and during that, there's a segment called Coach's Corner, which was Don Cherry and uh, Rob McLean, where they would talk about stuff going on in hockey, and they would, and Don would rant and rave. So we're like, oh, we got to add that into the show and do Hoser's Corner, and uh, and that's that's where we're at. Yeah, that's cool. I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the description of the video to uh, to their Instagram profile. Go check it out if you got the time. Speaking of time, uh, we can't get out of here without talking about uh, Canadian shaving soaps because all of the Canadian artisans that I'm familiar with have been punching above their weight class. Like, it really is craziness. Like, you've got uh, Highland Springs Soap Company. There's McDuff's. You've got, uh, what's that really expensive one that, uh, oh, goodness, I can't remember the name. Tallow and Steel tallow and steel yeah like i have not gotten my hands on a canadian artisan made soap that that wasn't like among the best performers like especially like my, my personal favorite is uh is highland springs i think they're they're the performance on that stuff is just craziness so what what do you what would you recommend for somebody who's kind of getting into that segment of the uh the artisan wet shaving space who maybe doesn't know you know what what they should uh, be gravitating towards i would definitely recommend highland springs they're a fantastic soap company um they make a great product they have two different bases they have the vegan and the tallow both are exceptional mcduff's is really good he, he had some growing pains at the start he was trying to do something with the uh, with beer in his base um you know trying to do a bit of recycling utilize some leftover beer solids or whatever from a local brewery that didn't quite pan out um but he had a great group of uh of wet shavers out in edmonton um that kind of helped him refine his base and then then he just took off and his, his base is fantastic another one i would highly recommend if you can get your hands on it this is probably my ultimate favorite base from canada and that's first canadian and uh oh, i forgot about he, that that's right yeah his stuff is just great label labels and soap names aside you know like dickens cider which is a holiday cider scent uh, which always features a, a lovely lady on on the uh, artwork and then the notorious well notorious he made a soap called notorious and then the um then the uh 
the mofo soap, you know, the one reference to carnal knowledge of one's mother with the, uh, with the Pulp Fiction theme, which is based on Creed, uh, Millezim, and Periel, which is just fantastic. The only, only problem with First Canadian is he's really busy with his, uh, with his real job now. And uh, he hasn't had much time to, to do a lot of soaping, which, which is a shame because he bought that company from somebody else that was kind of really struggling because there wasn't much innovation going on, really plain tubs, really plain labels. And, and, you know, and the soap was okay. So Randy took it, reformulated it, and then turned the base into, you know, from what I, wa- what I would consider one of the top tier bases out there. It stands right with all the best soaps. Fortunately, it's really hard to get your hands on right now. But the Canadians, Canadians have always been a bit of a sleeper. Uh, back in the day, there was another company called Soapy Bathman. And, and, and he wasn't very well known in the States. And, and I was trying to get the word out. And a few others are trying to get the word out. But he was offering an eight ounce hard puck soap that performed really, really, really good. And I mean, really good for a hard puck soap. And it was like 20 bucks Canadian, which is about eight dollars american with the exchange if it were if it was today i mean this was an eight ounce tub of soap and it lasted forever and ever and ever and it was really really good stuff he, he was ahead of his time in a way um but then he got he got out of the soap making game but yeah i don't know the canadian the canadians it almost seems like they have something to prove there's so many american artisans and it, it's it's been a push for for those of us in canada to try and and get you know, get the word out there that, yeah, you know, there's some really good artisans in Canada. They're putting out some really good soaps and it's worth, worth taking a look at. Yeah, definitely. I, I need to get my hands on a uh, first Canadian soap. I, I actually tried to buy a set when they came out with the um, polo green dupe, but there was something wrong with their, uh, with their shipping where shipping to us APO addresses which shouldn't cost any more than shipping anywhere else in the States. It was like $65 for shipping. I was like, whoa. So it was one of those things where it's just like, eh, that's that's a tough one. But I do love their labels. Like uh, I'm one of those people that, uh, you know, I got to I gotta clap at, at people who are willing to do politically incorrect labels. Just because I think... Uh, we're living in an age where people are getting outraged about everything. And so when somebody does those politically incorrect labels, it's kind of a, kind of a giant middle finger to, to all that garbage. That's, that's just my personal opinion on the issue. What do you think? Oh, I agree. 110%. There was a whole meltdown in a, in a Facebook group. I won't mention it, but any, anybody who knows, knows which group it was. <laughs> there was a whole melt meltdown over the, uh, the, uh, MF soap, um, you know, where people just simply couldn't be adults and scroll on by because that, that soap was generating hype before it even came out, just for the label alone. Then once the scent was re- sent, you know, the, what, what the scent was going to be was released, people were losing their minds. They couldn't wait to get their nose on it. And the funny thing is that that soap was really well received in that particular Facebook group. Like I would put a post up, I would get 45, 50, 60 likes on a post in a Facebook group, like which you know you're on facebook and that or I, i'm pretty sure you are but it's not too often you put a just a shave of the day post up in a group and you get that many likes and it was you know i did a couple like that and got that much reaction yeah. mike did lyle did so people the demand in the facebook group was there for that product people wanted it they wanted to see it and then a couple of the admin well one person reported it because they couldn't you know scroll on by and just be an adult and then just led to a whole meltdown. And then we all left the group and everybody's been successful <laughs> in their own right afterwards. Right. So it's just, it's one of those things. And Randy is definitely about the least politically correct person you could meet. And he's not afraid to, uh, to push the boundaries. That's for sure. Yeah. A and E had a similar problem with their pinup series where people couldn't, couldn't just laugh at it and go about their day. They had to, they had to gripe and complain about it, which is unfortunate, but you know, Hey, whatever. So what did you bring for the frag out? What do you got? I did bring the CK shock. It's just a good old classic scent. I'm not even, 
sure what the scent profile. I think it's like tobacco and woody and a bit of citrus and stuff. It's uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I never really nerded out on the notes on. It. I never really actually looked it up. But it just it just smells nice and and I wonder from Mel on BBS Live. So it's uh, it's even better. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and spray that stuff. I got the uh, Mancera Sadrap Boise that I've been using a lot lately. So I'm going to go ahead and spray that. Yeah, that, that CK Shock, that definitely uh, uh, looks like it would smell kind of kind of, kind of wacky just based on how it looks. But, you know, I what, if I'm looking at that, I'm getting like green apple vibes and just like the, the – the, uh, the label does not, you know, suggest what it actually smells like because it doesn't smell fruity or anything like that, does it? No, no, not really. Um, no, the label doesn't really do a good job of conveying what it is. I think, I think Ben uh, Bilu meant, uh, I remember him telling me one time that CK Shock is kind of like, uh, you know, an introduction, and in, in, if you're getting into frags, kind of like an introduction to tobacco scents. And, you know, now that I'm smelling it like, again, because usually when I'm smelling it, I'm a little bit uh, lubricated on the on the mafia show. Um, I can actually concentrate on it. I do get tobacco. I get a bit of spiciness, possibly a little bit of vanilla. Like it's just it's just pleasant. So it's kind of a woody, spicy tobacco, vanilla sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fair. Yeah. Well, before we get out of here, do you have any parting words of wisdom? for the audience before we hit the, uh, hit the end button and, uh, go away into history. Parting words of wisdom. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, I could use my YouTube tagline, which is something uh, I stand by, you know, 100%. Um, and that's why I say in every video, you know, be safe out there, be kind to one another, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated, try and be nice, try and be a steward of the community. Um, you know, the white shaving community is, is, is a really fun place to be. So, um, keep that in mind, especially, you know, things get a little bit heated with the shave politics and stuff. Just, you know, remember to dial it back and, and, you know, have some great shaves and, you know, and don't be afraid to experiment. If you're doing, if you're doing stuff and you're not getting great shaves, there's a wealth of knowledge out there in YouTube and in the groups and on Instagram. And, uh, you know, never feel afraid to reach out to people either. People are more than willing to help. So yeah, just keep experimenting until you find what works for you and, and you will find what works for you. Yeah, those are those. Uh, I, I really like that. Uh, be kind to one another is one that I think we need to do more of because there are very inf influential YouTubers who kind of just quit because people were not being adults, like you said. So, you know, even I kind of, I stick around on YouTube in spite of the fact that I think there's frankly stupid drama that ought not to be there. But some people it just ruins it for them and they, they kind of pack up and go away. So we need to make sure that we are being good stewards of the community and making it inviting for everybody because all this, all this politics and all this drama, like, like oh, for what? So you can be right. Like if somebody somebody proves me wrong, I don't care. It's like okay, so I'm wrong. Let's move on and and keep shaving. I always tell people uh, at the end of every video, I always say shave like you mean it. That's because I think uh, you should do everything like you mean it. You know, everything should have kind of a a calculated deliberateness to it. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I agree 110 percent. And I mean, well, even looking at us and our content, like, you know, the way you shave compared to the way I shave. Well, if you shaved the way I shave, then you would have just horrible results. You would probably just quit shaving altogether. Vice versa, the same for me. If I tried doing my passes and that the same way you did them, I, I would just do nothing but suffer. But but do we go into each other's comment section and say, oh, well, I think you're doing something wrong there. Oh, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do it that way. You should do it this way. Like, no, we don't, because at the end of the day, it's your shave is tailored to, to what you need. Right. And that and that is the biggest part of drama in, in the YouTube, especially the comment section is like, you know, you're, you're out there putting yourself out there 
and you know you're showing people how you like to shave the products you like the the way you like to do it then you get people in the comment section like oh you're doing this wrong what how are you doing it wrong you're you're doing it the way that works for you like there's 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 no wrong way to to to, to perform a shave on yourself you know that works for you and that's that's one of the biggest parts and I, and I can see why people uh, just stop and quit YouTube because they just eventually they probably just get worn down of dealing with that idiocy. Well, some people are just trolls and they can't help themselves. Like, uh, you know, I've had people come on my comment section and be like, why are you doing this this way? Why are you doing that that way? You, you're such an idiot. And it's just like, whatever, dude. It's like, if you don't like it, don't watch. That's what I have to say about that. Okay, well, check out J-Mac, the Red Island Shaver. I will put him down there and up here so you can have an easy click to go check out J-Mac, the Red Island Shaver. Hit his uh, subscribe button over there just as hard as you can. Don't break it, but definitely just slam that subscribe button if you're willing to uh, to humor his content. Thanks for coming on, J-Mac. I appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me on, Ben. I, I really enjoyed this. This was a this was a ton of fun. I think it's a great series, and and uh, you know it just goes you know right back to the the thing we talked about the stewardship of the community, right? Getting getting people involved and and talking about things in a different format. I think I think it's great. Absolutely, without a doubt. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. This is something telling you shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.